Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And today we're going to be taking a look at this effect, which is a project that I created for Apple Motion. And I thought it would be quite interesting to see what one could do if one took the idea and turned it into a Blender project. Now, I'm not going to show you the entirety of this. I'm really just going to concentrate on the aspect of the animated rings. And in order to do that, I'm going to be giving you a link to the project at that point. So you can start from there. So anyway, let's begin. So when you open up the project, it's going to look like this. And if you switch into the rendered view, you'll see that we've got a background, which is this wall here, easier to see in that view. And we've got this transparent tube that runs through the wall like that. And we've already got a red light in the middle there. I've also set it up so there's a collection of cameras and we can just easily switch between them. Camera B, if we look at it, is the one looking down the tube like that. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a line to create the path for the animated rings. I'm going to make a new collection in which to do this, so new collection. Let's call this rings and let's turn off the master collection there just so we can focus on this. Let's even turn off the cameras. So in that rings collection, I'm going to add curve and line. Just a quick note to say that if you haven't got the line option available, you need to come over to edit and preferences and add-ons and you need to enable this one here, add curve extra objects. So make sure you've got this open here, the item view, that's N to show and hide this view. Then we want to draw over this end point and its two control points. And we just need to zero out the Y and the Z values. Do make sure you've got the two control points uh, selected as well, otherwise it's going to go wrong. And select this one here, and its two control points might as well, and set that X value to negative two. And now we've got a straight line and it's not going to be affected if we scale it on X. It's just going to stay nice and straight. So let's come out of edit mode and let's now click on geometry nodes to start the process. So click on new to set up a new flow and you'll see that we've got our line here that is going into our geometry nodes output there. So the first thing I want to do is to make the ring. Now, in geometry nodes, we don't actually have a torus. We've got various primitives, but no torus. So that's not a big problem. We can set up our own torus. So let's come to add and curve primitives and curve circle and add that. And let's just pipe that into the geometry output so we can see it. So then we need to turn this into a torus. So let's do A and S to search, and I'm going to search for curve to mesh. And I'm going to add that in here like that. So now we need to give this a profile, and we want to give it a circular profile. So we can do that very easily by hitting Shift D on this first curve circle, making a copy of it. Let's set this new radius to 0.1, and let's pipe that into the profile curve. And now you see we've got our torus. You'll probably see the torus is a little bit rough, so let's bump up the resolution of the first curve circle to 64. And the resolution of this other curve circle, which is much, much smaller, we can reduce to 12, just to save ourselves a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a transformation node to affect the line. So A and S, and let's type transform, so transform geometry. Let's pipe the geometry into there and let's just temporarily pipe that into the output so we can see what's going on. So then if we scale the X value, you see we, we can animate our line. So let's set that just to one. Before we animate our line, I just want to instantiate these toruses on that line. So what I'm going to do is transform this line to points. So I'll do A and S and curve to points. Bring that in here. 
pop that in there like that. And then we want instances on points after that. So A and S, instances on points, this one down here. Add that after that. So the points are going to the points. And all we need now is to give it the instance, which is our torus. So pipe that mesh into the instance input. So they're in the wrong orientation. And what we need to do is we just need to rotate them 90 degrees on Y. And now we've got our array like that. So this is a good start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the points to 24. It gives us some more interesting result. So then let's talk about animating this scale, as I say. So as you, you see now, animating the line gives us the basic effect. So we need to make that happen automatically. And we can do that using scene time. So A, S to search for scene time, bring that in. And then after this, we're going to add a math node. So A, S, math. Let's pipe the seconds out into the first value. And here where it says add, let's actually switch to sine like so. Now the problem is our value coming out of here is a single value. And these values here are vectors. So what we need to do is we need to split it out so we can just drive the x. So we can do that with a combine x, y, z. So a, s and combine x, y, z. Pop that into here. So we can take our sine value and put it into x like that. And then we can take the output, the vector output, into the translation. And now you'll see it's kind of moving left to right like this. But we also need to animate its scale. So we can do that again using our sine and we can pipe it into this scale here. So I'm going to duplicate that combine x, y, z. So shift D, drag it down to here, pipe the sine value into the x and take the output into the scale. And now it's very slightly going to scale backwards and forwards on x like that. So now let's come to our master collection up here and turn it back on again so we can see this in context. And now if we scroll up and down, you'll see that our circle is a little bit too big. So let's reduce this radius here of the first curved circle down to 0.7, and that's going to fit our tube a little bit better. Now it's not actually moving quite far enough left and right because the sine value only goes from negative one to positive one, and we need to increase that. So before the combine x, y, z going into the translation value there, we'll need to add a math node. So a, s, math, and we'll just drop it in there. And then we'll set the operation to multiply and we'll set the value to five. And now if we play it, it's looking pretty good. So it's going left to right, but it's also stretching nicely to both ends of the tube. So that's a good start on the animation. Now let's consider the whole question of the color. So we're going to come over to shading and object, don't know why it's set to world. And let's make a new material and let's call this rings. So what I want to do is I want to have a color ramp going into the rings. So let's zoom in. It's, I'm going to set this up, but it's not initially going to work. But anyway, let's set it up anyway. So A, S to select color ramp, bring that in here. And I'm going to take the color output just temporarily into the base color. And we're going to have this left hand one here. Let's make it red. The right hand one, let's make it blue. And then let's click on the plus sign to set one in the middle and let's make that one green. And the green is slightly down in value and I think that's actually a good thing. We don't want the green to be too bright. So why is that not applying to our rings? Well, we need to tell the geometry nodes how to map this ramp onto the rings. So let's come back to geometry nodes. And there are a number of things we need to do. First of all, let's come over to here, the end. And just after the instance on points, I want to add a realize instances. Drop that in there. And after that, I want to add a set material. So AS set material, and let's drop it into there. And then from the drop down, let's select rings. And already that's looking better. We've got some color, but it's certainly not the color that we're expecting. So then what we have to do is we have to capture the index values 
of the line that is driving the whole operation. In actual fact, it's only got two numbers. It's got one for the start and one for the end, but we still need to grab that. So what we're going to do is just move this group input over a little bit so we can see it next to the group output. And actually, let's move both of those a little bit close together like that. So we're going to capture the index attribute of the line as it comes into the geometry nodes. So A, S, and capture attribute and just drop it in there. If we drag to the left from the value, it brings up the search field and we can just type in index because index is the attribute that we want to capture. And then we can pipe the attribute, this one that we've captured, into this node here on the group output. Uh, and maybe you saw what happened there. We suddenly got this extra field. Make sure you've toggled n to make sure we can see these group values here. Not any of these others. Make sure you're on group so you can see this new attribute field that we've added. So let's select that. We don't want to call it attribute. We want to call it index. So it'll turn up correctly there. You can see that's now called index there. And over here in the modifier, you'll see that there's an output attributes. And that's not got a term called index, but it's still got an empty value here that we need to give a name to. So it does seem a bit like an unnecessary duplication, but it does make some sort of sense. So I'm going to give it my own name, and that's going to be IND, just uh, an easy shortcut for index. And then we can use that name in the shader tree. So let's come back over to shading, and let's give ourselves an attribute node. So AS and attribute, bring that in there. And what we're going to use is the fac and pipe it into the color ramp there because we actually want to use just a number and the, the that, that's the index numbers or the array of index numbers. And so here we'll give it the name IND. And now you'll see where we're good to go because our colors are now mapped across our rings like that. They're going kind of blue to red because we're in the negative phase of the animation. And when we're in the positive phase, they'll match the positions of the color ramp. So not, not, not to worry about that. Now, what I want to do is I don't actually want to use this for the base color. I want to use it for the emission. So I'm going to take the output and pipe it into the emission like that. Base color, make sure to set that to black. And let's set the emission strength to three. And let's just play with the alpha. Let's go for something like 0.3. And we do need to make sure that, I've already set this up, but that the alpha blend mode here, down here at the bottom of the material tree, long, long way down, this blend mode is set to alpha blend in order to give us transparency in the render. So we're looking pretty good now. And the result is this, but it's not looking very convincing because we actually need to give it some lights that follow along with these glowing rings. So we've already got a red light that I've set up for you. It's here, it's sitting back in the middle of everything, zero, 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 and I've colored it red and its power is down to 250 watts. So what we're gonna do is we're going to link it to the sine wave movement now, to link it actually into the geometry nodes animation is really quite excessively complicated, and I don't want to take you there. So we're just going to do it with a driver to mimic the effect of that. So let's right click on the location there, the X location, and let's click Add Driver. Turn on Use Self, and let's just hide the var there, we don't need that. So what we're going to do is for the expression, we're going to type SIN in lowercase, open brackets, frame divided by 24 and enter. So now you can see our red light is moving left and right, but it's not moving quite far enough. So let's just make a little bit of an adjustment to our driver. So edit drivers. So we need to add a multiplier to this function and I'm going to go for times, that's asterisk three. And now you can see the red light is matching the red end of the rings, already starting to look much better. So let's duplicate this red light. So red light and shift D, let's call it light green. Let's change its color, come down to the light, 
change its color to green. Let's come into its transform. So we need to push it a little bit further over than the red. So let's come to edit driver. And instead of times three, let's go for times five. And now the green light is in the middle of the rings. Let's do this one more time. Let's shift D over the viewport to duplicate the light again. And let's call it blue. And then let's edit the color, make it blue. And let's come over and edit the driver. Edit driver. And this time let's have a multiplier of seven. And you see that's put it on the blue end of the line. So now we're looking pretty good. The lights are really adding to the effect because they're also lighting up the printed circuit board as well, which is nice. So then if we switch to our secondary camera, so let's come to scene and switch to camera B and let's have a look how that's all looking. Quite nice. Let's do a quick render of that. Really pretty, pretty funky. And let's just set up a little bit of an animation on this camera. So let's actually come to, you see that's a nice view as well. You, can, you might want to kind of use that as, a, as an alternative at some point or swing around. But anyway, I'm just going to just do something very basic with camera B. Sure, I've got it selected. Let's turn back on the camera's group, uh, select the camera B. In fact, let's just take a quick look at how the animation is working. Here's our camera pointing and the rings actually kind of go through it almost immediately. So I think what I want to do is I actually want to turn my camera around so it's going the other way. So let's rotate it through negative 90 on Z. So it's pointing the other way. And let's start over here. So let's come to the first frame. Let's make sure that we're looking through camera B. So we could start maybe somewhere like here. So negative 1.4, something like that. Set a keyframe there. Let's come to the end and let's pull back like this till we get to about there. So that's negative 7.7 .7. in the graph editor. Let's make sure to select the first keyframe there by clicking on it, hit T to bring up the keyframe interpolation and select linear. And now that's going to go like this. Oh, it looks pretty nice, I think. And let's also just have a Y rotation, I think. Let's again come to the first frame. Let's set a keyframe on the Y. Let's come to the last frame, set that to 720. And again, hit another keyframe there. And again, let's select that and hit T to bring up the linear interpolation. So now we've got this, which is all pretty interesting and wild. We can come to camera A and have a look at how that's looking. We kind of know already it does look quite nice. So lots more you could do, I think, in terms of interesting camera angles, as I kind of showed you briefly. But I think that's enough for now. If there's any interest, I will show you how I built the tube and, and did this PCB wall. But otherwise, I think that's enough for now. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I will see you again another time.